good? Okay. Hi, um, my name is Purnima Kamit, and I am a director with Women Who Code in Singapore. I founded the network with Yulin um, in 2017 in January, so that makes us around two or three years now, so yay. Um, I'm also an evangelist with Yao Conferences. Um, Yao is a conference organization. We bring experts from all over the world to Singapore to develop our communities. So if you'd like to know more of what we do and all the cool things we have in store, so do, do chat with me later. My topic for today is, um, is essentially around life hacks for an engineering manager. Um, um, almost a decade back, when I first took on my, uh, a role of an engineering manager, I really wish somebody had mentored me and prepared me into actually taking up the role. So um, this talk is titled, I wish someone told me this. What this talk is not about, it's not going to be about how agile is good or how scaled agile will probably be beneficial to your organization. It's not about measuring velocity of your team or how you could get estimates right or how your project can be under budget. Is there such a thing as under budget? I don't think so, but yeah, uh, what the best team structure could be. But what this talk is about is essentially few life hacks 101 for managing teams. Um, stuff that I learned the hard way. Um, hope I can like kind of bundle it up in 20 minutes and then present it to you. A little bit about myself, uh, my career journey. Um, I started off, um, I graduated as an electronics engineer um, and started off my software uh, journey in 2004. So um, I, my first job was um, as a Java and a web developer. So if you're familiar with technologies like 8051 microcontrollers using assembly language or Java 2, the ancient version, or Spring 1.1 or Hibernate or JSR 2, 268 portlets, well, that's the generation of software engineers I come from. Um, I worked across various financial institutions um, like Morgan Stanley, Lehman Brothers, and eventually Credit Suisse, which was my last job. Um, I helped develop uh, OTC derivative trading systems, um, and also the latest project I worked on was investment banking research distribution systems. Um, Almost a decade back, I was given this opportunity to manage um, a couple of development teams and product teams um, across multiple cities and different time zones across um, Singapore, Pune, um, London, New York, and Mexico. So whenever someone asks me what a manager does, this is the gif that comes into my mind. Um, so like managers are essentially middle men or middle women and who manage stakeholders on one hand and teams on the other. The most notably what you will see in this gif is the stakeholders and the team are never on the seesaw at the same time. It's just like juggling both, both of these uh, components together. Goes to say something about the role, um, you cannot make everyone happy. Um, so who are engineering managers? Um, they're different people um, who do different roles, and there is an all-encompassing uh, engineering manager as well. Some people call themselves as people's manager because they're more focused towards people's career developments and, and their aspirations. A uh, few of them are more technically minded uh, who take architectural decisions for the teams on how the product should be delivered. A um, few of them are more delivery-oriented, like project tra tracking, uh, resource management, or, or how, what are the schedules, uh, what are the constraints in the particular schedule, you uh, when you're delivering stuff on um, all the ubiquitous um, engineering manager who does all of the above what do engineer ma what do these managers do um, managers hire people um, right now or the kind of project uh, what the hiring is going to look like like six months from now uh, communicating with stakeholders be it product owners or users or if it's a small company um, Co coordinate with your CEO, um, track project from a schedule standpoint, monetary standpoint, or time standpoint, um, team objectives and appraisals, and timesheets. The most fun part of being a manager. So on a Friday evening, just before you're going for your family dinner, you realize that you haven't approved timesheets. And then you open this really humongously huge and slow system, and you start typing in each 30 individuals' names and try to approve their timesheets. Fun job. Um, the, the only downside as engineers that we see while we are promoted to engineering managers is there's no coding involved. Um, there's a huge perspective shift that needs to happen when you are a coder, when you code on a day-to-day -day basis and you move into an engineering uh, manager role. So what do I mean by that? 
it means that you have to start delegating. Um, as engineers, we have a tendency to do everything ourselves. We want to do every line of code is something that you need to draft and craft and create and submit and publish to production. Um, a personal story, a um, couple of years back, we hired a vendor team in Pune. Um, I was involved in the vendor selection, trying to figure out what is a contract that suits them best, um, you know, uh, scope out the project, what they would need to do, and stuff like that. And there was the only use case that we wanted them to work on is to convert this low-level Java transport, uh, which um, used a messaging system uh, for an SOA, a service-oriented architecture, and move it onto a shiny new technology at the time called as Apache CXF. So if you worked in, or in software on open source projects in the last decade, you would know that the documentation was terrible. Um, and people hardly had documentation for open source. And even if it did have libraries, if, even if they had documentation, it was so convoluted and so complicated, people could never make sense of it. So naturally, the team suffered. Um, they were not able to deliver it, and uh, they were stuck at the minutest details that go into actually adopting that piece of technology. Um, and unfortunately, we were, we were not able to meet the timelines. My solution to it is I did the whole thing myself. I delivered it, and it was, it was amazing. I felt really cool because I was a manager. I was managing these two teams uh, who are disparate, who are in two different locations, and still not able to deliver. I felt really cool, you know? But unfortunately, I realized after some time, I was the only one doing it all the time. So it's, it's, it was great for the project but not for the team as such. And this was visible to everybody. Um, even the senior management kind of understood that there is no outcome coming out from that team. So obviously we moved on. We moved on to a different vendor. We uh, dif moved on to a different contract altogether and the team couldn't make it. What could I have done instead? Um, I could have actually spoken upwards to my managers and asked for some budgets on training, asked for more time on delivery. I could have worked downwards to my team and asked them to, you know, guys, fuck up, <laughs> you have to complete this project. Um, or um, actually I could have worked or trained these people to actually come up to speed and do the project and implement it. Um, this is what I did with the next vendor that we had and really happy to say that they are still around, so hopefully thriving. Another learning while growing in the engineers man engineering manager's role was uh, to create teams which are not dependent on you. Um, at any point in time, if you're managing at least two or three teams that could comprise of somewhere around 20 to 30 individuals, imagine a scenario where all these 30 individuals come to you with questions. Um, there's only 24 hours in a day and you are not able to um, answer each one of them. Um, the best you could do is to create a team structure wherein you have only a couple of leads reporting into you and have those leads build their leadership skills to actually manage those sub-teams. So that kind of actually um, frees up a lot of your time to do more creative things, and uh, uh, things that are more meaningful to you. Um, it helps not just to maintain your sanity, it also helps build leadership in your team. Um, meet with the leads regularly. Call it, if, if you're into scaled agile methodology, call it scrum of scrums, uh, if you may. Um, we are no Captain Marvels or Supergirls here. We don't want to do everything. Um, so yeah, delegate and build independent teams. You know, the biggest boring est stuff managers do is emails. There are so many emails, emails on action items, emails on minutes of meetings, follow up on action items, follow up on minutes of meetings. It's just endless. Um, it's the most time consuming and the least productive part of any manager's job. And believe me, I've had nightmares, you know, the email hell where you have nothing to do but just responding to emails day in and out. Yeah, it's, 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 it's horrible. Um, the solution to it is time boxing. Um, Time, box is a, time boxing is an idea where you allocate certain amount of time to a task and just get to it dispassionately during that hour. It, it, can, it can be an hour, it can be two hours, or how many ever, whatever you allocate to it. Um, it's a life hack. Um, dispassionate to get to that particular uh, task and you finish and you stop obsessing over it um, after that particular time period. 
Um, there is this author called Charles Duhigg who's written about um, uh, power of habit, how creating habits around something and getting it to getting to it consistently becomes a natural phenomenon. Um, so what it means is once you get to time boxing on a regular basis, it comes to you naturally. So you just don't keep obsessing over emails all the time. It's this especially is important when it comes to time boxing emails because first of all, you would control the urge of responding to something immediately. Um, control the urge of responding to something at night or at midnight when you've gotten up, you've woken up for a sip of water. Um, it will set expectations amongst your team, amongst your colleagues, your peers, and also your management to, you know, they won't be expecting anything out of you uh, at an unearthly hour. Or in times of constraints, let's say you have a production issue, or you're not well, or you're on a vacation, people don't expect you to respond because you know that you're not available. You can also get to like more important things that are more meaningful to you. The biggest aspect of um, being a manager is to build trusting teams. Uh, what do I mean by trusting teams? Uh, teams? Trusting teams are teams that are, first of all, they're independent. Uh, they don't rely just on you. Uh, they rely on each other. Multiple sub-teams rely on each other. And teams that believe that you have their back. It's, and this third point is extremely important in the software industry, uh, unfortunately. Uh, a personal outage story, if I may. A few years back, um, there was this one particular session management bug uh, in, in the app that I was managing. And um, the impact was for a few users, but I think the bigger issue was a compliance issue since it was a banking, um, banking application. The bug was because of a poorly written code by this consultant in New York uh, who happened to not be around when the bug hap actually surfaced. Um, I and the team, we spent around two nights debugging the whole thing and fixing the whole thing. And eventually when the fix went out, um, everything was hunky-dory and we had a retrospective with our senior management on to, you know, what, what went wrong, what we could do better. Um, this one of the senior managers, he was clearly upset um, because compliance issue, right? And if you worked in banking tech, you would know that that's a strict no-no. Um, and he got onto the call. He was a little bit angry. He was a little bit upset. And he called the dev team a failure, which was very upsetting because the dev team actually helped fix the whole thing. Uh, it, it wasn't really the dev team's uh, fault, if, if, if I can say so. It reduces the morale of the team when you have so much negativity in a talk, uh, in, in a call, and especially coming from a senior manager. Um, I lost two members from my team that month, and um, I think I would have left two if it was not for one of my mentors um, in, in, in that particular organization. So how do you build trust? You, first of all, set up clear, defined processes, and you communicate it well. Um, you don't leave it to assumptions. You don't assume that a particular consultant, since he's based in New York, he must be really cool, and he would know what unit testing means, right? No, apparently, it doesn't. So uh, cl communicate them uh, clearly. Be flexible with those processes. See what works for your team, uh, what doesn't work. Um, and don't blame people for mistakes. Um, instead, spin it off into a positive um, way. Create learnings and improvements, um, anger really doesn't help anybody. And uh, I think a, bit, a brilliant way to humanize the engineering manager's position is to create like a backup or a deputy um, of, of sorts um, to, uh, to actually also help, you know, to get a pulse of what's happening within the team and also create like um, a little bit of leadership, um, you know, you mentor people for, on leadership. It also kind of builds more trust. Another critical aspect of a manager's job is hiring. There was this talk by Jessica Kerr a um, few months back at, at Yao Sydney, where she talks about uh, teams being a semanticy. So what is semanticy? A semanticy is a learning system. And um, a, syst a learning system which is cr consisting of learning parts. So she says that you don't make great teams by hiring all superstar developers. She says, if you just build teams where the developers work well with each other, and th such uh, developers create great teams. And these great teams, in turn, create superstar developers. So um, don't go looking for those 
champs who give like really cool uh, uh, talks at conferences. They might not be exactly what your team needs, um, but try hiring for more diversity. Um, ta um, tailor down your job description to make it more inclusive. Um, try avoid avoiding words like, you know, you want to hire superstars or hackers, and it just doesn't work. Um, try and hire more junior devs, because junior developers are, um, they are fresh minds. They are willing to adopt what you are telling them, essentially. And they adopt your culture very well, and they really actually deliver what you are, the kind of things that you want them to do and mentor more often. I think as engineering managers, what we don't do is um, mentoring, try to mentor people and build them up. We are always expecting people to perform right from the get-go. I think mentorship is extremely important. In my experience, um, most of a manager's job is just showing up. It's just showing up, it's setting up meetings and showing up to them, setting up 101s, and showing up to them. Uh, 101s should not be just about work or how many bug fixes have you done or how many JIRAs did you solve or uh, telling off people that they haven't done well in, 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 in their jobs or something. Uh, it has to be about getting to know that individual more. It has to be about a personal life. Uh, it has to be about their habits, their hobbies, their aspirations, and try and build the semantics that you're actually expecting um, within your teams. Give it enough time and discussing with people is important. Um, if you're feeling more radical as an engineering manager, host ask me anything but yeah let me know if you, if you actually ever host to ask me anything the most common problem that engineers have when they take up um, engineering manager roles is job satisfaction as engineers we are used to the pat on your back like, great job you fixed the production issue or you know congratulations you know here's your certificate of appreciation you fixed most number of jiras this month um, as engineering managers, nobody does that for you. Unfortunately, that's the truth. Because your senior management could care two monkeys if, if you've done a great job. And your team is actually expecting you to pat their backs. So it's essentially, um, I wouldn't say a thankless job, but tending towards there. Um, so how do you get job satisfaction in, in such a scenario? You create your own yardstick. Um, First of all, you have to have to keep a track of your achievements. Those little aha moments that you get when, when you're a manager of your team, let's say that you actually helped mentor somebody or um, you actually helped somebody um, you know, up towards their career aspirations. You, can, you document all of this. I used to maintain an Excel sheet and I, um, I'm a big user of Microsoft OneNote uh, with the tabbed um, notes so that I can actually tabulate every month what I have done. Do it on a daily basis because it's important not just for your, from your appraisal standpoint, but also from your sanity, for your sanity. Um, because sometimes what happens is, actually most times, um, an engineering manager's job cannot be quantified. Um, you cannot count uh, how many successes you have had or what you could do better. Um, you could, only way to do it is document those small aha moments that you had um, through, through the year. Uh, if not, it's easily forgotten. And do not lose touch with coding. That's, that's the, the, I think if there's one learning that I would have is um, as managers, it's so easy to not code and lose touch with coding. Um, and it's important because, especially when you're looking for jobs externally, coding is the ent entry criteria. A manager or a senior, um, a senior software engineer or a lead, in, lead in an engineer or an architect, the entry level criteria is code. So if you lose touch, um, then you, your kind of choices become uh, go lower. Um, and it's also um, it's important to understand how your team thinks um, and also if they are giving the right estimates and so on. Uh, try to see if you can contribute in small way on your own projects. If not, uh, start a pet project. Um, attend Women Who Code meetups. Come and join us. We talk about code on a regular basis. Uh, attend all, any other meetup across Singapore. I mean, they're all awesome. And um, yeah, keep up skilling. Most engineers, especially women, who get into the engineering manager's role are normally filling in for somebody, somebody who's gone on a vacation, somebody who's gone on a sabbatical, or if it's a new role, amazing. 
But when you are given that position, ask for a raise, ask for a promotion, because normally you are not offered that promotion and not offered that raise. Um, do not ever do it for the learning or it will help me understand if you know I will like being an engineering manager or think that if I do a great job they will actually give me a raise or a promotion it never happens it did not happen to me and I unfortunately learned it a little bit late um, so and be ready for resistance because when you ask them for ask your senior management for a raise for a promotion because you're doing an engineering manager's job they you will be um, given a little bit of resistance saying that you know you probably should try and you know think see if it actually works for you um, keep reminding them that's what you can do um, and I think eventually uh, things do settle down and once you know that the engineering manager's role is for you um, you don't want to be feel left out and you think that you actually spent so much time actually doing that role and not having been given a raise so that's all I had from the tips basket uh, from, from what, I, what I've learned. Um, if, if you are going to take up your first gig as an engineering manager, um, be kind to yourself. And uh, I, it's building teams, hiring, communicating, minutes, emails. Uh, it's a lot to do. It's a tough job. Um, you do not have to know everything. And it's OK to ask for help. And um, just remember, everybody has a manager. Even a CEO reports to a board, right? So they've got managers too. Thank you. That's my Twitter handle. So yeah, uh, if you like generative art, you could follow me. I keep doing a lot of generative stuff. Thanks.